déteste le ridicule. Et c'est pas mon style. Je crois que tout ce qui s'habille à peu près bien dans le monde s'habille ici. Je ne connais rien de plus vieillissant que d'essayer de se rajeunir. Moi, j'ai trouvé un style une bonne fois pour toutes et je m'y tiens. 50 years after her death, her influence on fashion lives on. The greatest designer of the 20th century, Gabrielle Coco Chanel, died in her suite at the Ritz in Paris half a century ago this month. The little black dress, Chanel number no. five, women's wide leg trousers and sailor shirts. Her work was in many ways a form of female emancipation. We're joined now by fashion journalist and the executive editor of the Fashion Bible, Oda magazine, Jessica Michaud. Hello, Jessica. When it comes to what we wear today, what is Gabrielle Chanel's main legacy, do you think? Well, when you think about Gabrielle Chanel, I think about the quote that she gave that I don't do fashion, I am fashion. And I think that really is the case. She really gave women freedom. She gave us um, a sartorial tools of liberation. You mentioned the wide-legged pants. Um, she freed up our hands by giving us the famous 255 Coco Chanel bag um, with a chain on it so that we could actually use our hands. She gave us freedom in terms of self-expression mixing high and low, so costume jewelry with real jewelry, um, fabrics like tweed or jersey, which were considered low end with more luxury fabrics. And then also the androgynous way she did clothing is very much echoing what we're seeing today with gender neutral clothing. So again, she was ahead of the time there. And of course, the little black dress, which is a sartorial staple in every woman's wardrobe and has rescued more than many of us more than once um, when we've had a fashion emergency. So I would say liberation and freedom is her legacy. Jessica, we'll talk more in just a second. But first, Julia Kim looks back at the career of an icon. From impoverished orphan to international fashion icon, self-taught and self-made, Gabrielle Coco Chanel was one of the most emblematic designers of the 20th century. She was also no stranger to controversy. Although the French designer divided opinion, there's little doubt she revolutionized the way women dressed. Chanel liberated the feminine silhouettes from the confines of the corset. But though her clothes epitomized simplicity and understatement, the woman behind them did not. A workaholic and a perfectionist, Chanel always demanded the best. Do you often have to redo a garment? Oh, la la. <laughs> Up to how many times? There's no limit. The architect of her own image, Chanel always took care not to reveal too much, according to the actress who once played her. She was someone who liked to question the mystery. She liked to play, that's for certain. Even in her own life, she participated in the myth-making by collaborating with so-called official biographers. But then she rejected them all. In recent years, Chanel's dirty laundry has been making headlines at home and abroad. At Paris's Ritz Hotel, her affair with a Nazi intelligence officer was common knowledge. But journalist Hal Vaughan's book reveals that in 1940, Gabrielle Chanel worked as a Nazi spy, recruiting agents for the Third Reich across Europe. She was number F7124, her code name Westminster. Under the anti-Semitic laws at the time, she sought to dispossess her Jewish business partners, the Wertheimers, of their majority stake in her label. <laughs> But in the end, the same family, which still owns the Chanel empire, permitted her to return to France after World War II. In her atelier on Paris's Rue Cambon, these couturiers put the finishing touches on bespoke garments for clients all over the world. The brand employs 25,000 people internationally and 7,000 here in France, all entrusted to continue the Chanel legacy. Leading them is Virginie Viard, the successor to the late Karl Lagerfeld. A hundred years of collections may have graced the catwalk, but Chanel has always remained synonymous with timeless elegance. As the designer herself said, fashion changes, but style endures. Fashion expert Jessica Michaud is with us. Karl Lagerfeld led the Chanel fashion house for more than 35 years. And what was his role in the label's current status? 
Well, I would say with Carl, um, he was very much like Coco in the sense that he was able to capture the zeitgeist of his time. He was always able to reach out and capture um, the air du temps and put that on the runway at Chanel. I think that <clears throat> I think that what Carl is also fantastic about doing was marketing Chanel to a global audience. Uh, he was able to create Chanel in a way that reached the four corners of the world having Chanel travel around and do shows internationally and made it a brand that was coveted um, far and wide um, around the globe. And I also think another important thing that Carl did during his tenure was to bring in the petit main, um, the little houses that do the beadwork, that do the feathers, that do um, all of the accessories and things like that into the fold to keep those talents and those techniques alive, um, to keep those businesses alive. So I think that's a great legacy as far as um, the time that uh, Carl was at the house. There's a major um, Chanel retrospective at the recently refurbished Palais Galliera in Paris at the moment. It's closed um, to the public because of COVID restrictions. But Olivia salazar Winspear has been to check it out for us. Trousers, the little black dress, even getting a suntan, they're all part of the revolutionary legacy of Gabrielle Chanel. The designer radically transformed the way we dress in the first half of the 20th century. Now Paris's Galliera Museum is paying tribute to her and her fashion manifesto. Shortly after the First World War, Chanel noticed that some women were freeing themselves from social diktats and she wanted to free up their wardrobe. Miran Arzalouz delved into the archives here at the Galliera Museum to put this exhibition together. Miran, tell us, what was so revolutionary about this so-called fashion manifesto? Well, we chose, precisely chose fashion manifesto for the title of the exhibition because we identified two moments in her life in which she completely opposed to the fashions of her time. And that was in the very beginning of her career in the 1910s. Anything that she conceived, she designed, she created, was for the woman to be natural, to move freely, to be at ease with herself. Every detail uh, in, her, in her clothes is towards, you know, to guarantee these this principles. In 1921, Coco, as she was known to friends, launched her first fragrance. Its minimalist bottle became iconic, and Chanel No. 5 is still a worldwide bestseller 100 years later. From then on, the label went beyond the clothes. From the quilted handbag to the statement jewelry and the two-tone pumps, accessories were key. The Second World War signalled a dark chapter in Chanel's history. It wasn't until the 1950s that she made her comeback with the Chanel suit. Sober, elegant, with the sort of clean lines that echoed the architectural creations of Le Corbusier or Charlotte Perriand. Sandra Courtine and Dominique Brard designed the layout of this show. We discovered a rigor, a desire to break with tradition, which was very striking. And you can transpose those ideas to architecture. The different qualities of black, the way she worked with black textures, from matte to gloss, draped fabrics and taut fabrics. These are things that resonate with us in terms of interior design. This opulent private residence just off the Champs-Élysées was given to the city of Paris in 1920. Now the museum's showcasing the work of a designer who molded a century of fashion in her own image and whose manifesto is quietly evident in the way we get dressed today. Jessica, the Chanel brand is now led by the designer Virginie Viard. After more than three decades of Karl Lagerfeld, a woman is once again at the helm. What impact is she having on the brand? 
Well, I would say that Virginie probably has Chanel number no. five coursing through her veins. She was at um, the side of Carl for over 30 years, um, learning, working alongside of him. I think that what she brings to the house and um, what a lot of women are loving is that she's bringing that ease and that sense of movement and comfort that was at the core of what Coco herself did back when she started the brand. And that's why um, Virginie and the work that she does is getting such rave reviews since she's taken over in 2019. OK, Jessica Michaud, thank you so much for joining us. A pleasure to see you. And that's the end of our show, looking back at Chanel's legacy 50 years after her death. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.